Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Kevin Jones and today it's round three with the final round of the Beaver State Fling. Today I've got three Europeans on the card, all good friends. It's gonna be a great round and I'm excited. Thank you for joining. Welcome back to the 2023 Beaver State Fling presented by Innova Champion Disc. We are out here at Milo McIver State Park for the final round of the MPO Division. Let's make some noise. Up first on the tee, sponsored by Team Prodigy and part of Legit Disc Golf. Let's hear it for Kevin Jones. Hey, what's up everybody? This is Kevin Jones and this is final round of the Beaver State Fling. This is gonna be my analysis on my round. Um, thanks for joining me for this round. So I've got my D1 here, this is 400G plastic. And yesterday I yanked it hard right and so I was like just trying to keep it straight here and I threw it really low, but at least I'm straight looking at the basket. I can save par here. I've got an A2 here because I want to like flare this one around the, the cedar here. So flat out of my hand. And I kind of expected it to cut a little bit more, but it uh, pushed a little bit long and now I'm in a really tricky spot to save my par on the first hole. And... Oh. I almost got that in there, but I'm going to have to settle for a bogey here. That brings us to hole two. I was feeling good about this one. I was just like, let's land this one on the ground vertical because we really have to get it moving right. It can't be going left at all. It doesn't matter if it's short, really. So I did just that. Just the tiniest bit of angle on it. Got it out here into the open. And now I'm going to put another roller down and try to get around this cedar tree. This D, this uh, reverb, I'm sorry, that I'm throwing is extremely understable. So if I can just have some speed on it, no matter what angle it's on the ground, for me, it continues to flip over. I got to this wide open spot here. This is 370 from the pin, but I have to go over those bushes. So it's a little bit, it plays a little bit farther. That's a pretty good shot right there. And that's gonna put me at 20 feet with this weird thing. I can't like bend my legs as much here as I would want to. But the putt feel, feels really good right now. I was confident. So uh, I think it's gonna be an easy day on the putting green at least. That's how I'm feeling at this point. All right, here I've got FX2, the flippiest FX2 that I've ever had. Go, 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 go. And I like the line. I'm throwing it out to the left on a hyzer and trying to drag it to the right. It just kind of like uh, didn't go as far as I needed. It's a 400 foot hole. I threw it like 360, I guess. It's uphill on a mound. And ev and today everything is a run. Like so I would maybe lay that up on the first day, but today that's gonna be a run for sure. Trying to move up. And like I said, the putt feels good. So comebacker was thankfully in. It was a 30 footer. And very similar shot on this hole. I've got my light blue FX2 and I really liked the angle here. This is like my, pretty. it's a pretty flippy FX2 but it's not my flippiest. Um, good run there on my putt from 60 or 70. But I was really surprised at how much that flipped. So keep that in mind. I'm, I'm gonna talk about that later in the round as well. But out of my hand, that angle was pretty good. Touch a hyzer. And the only difference was today there was a tiny breeze coming at me as opposed to the tailwind that I was facing. All right, this is the hole that I eagled yesterday. And I got the two on it, put it to right there, 45 feet, and then made my jumper. Trying to do the same thing today, but can't really expect that. That's for sure. But I'm just going to get some distance with this roller it's like just a touch of anheuser out of my hand not much i really want the disc to hit the ground with a lot of angle because as long as i get out left i'll have a really doable approach shot this was fantastic and i was definitely gonna run this one and i'll take a birdie there the conditions this in this tournament were incredible like almost no wind and the temperature was as it was like indoors so awesome today i am going for this one i was like throwing sidearm on this one 
uh, past days, not trying to mess with it. Today, I'm trying. I f just felt it, and I knew I needed a birdie, so I tried. But it caught a tree and dropped me in the fairway. So here, I'm going with my flippiest FX2 because I don't need to go that far, and I need it to go really far left. I needed it to curve a lot. That was a really good shot. When you want something to curve a lot, like carry to the left, you have to throw understable, not overstable. And then right here, I'm overturning the D1 with my fan grip. Throwing a fan grip, flat D1 shot, just a little overturned. And I got that light blue FX2 right here. I was not ready for a car. And there was a car I was not expecting at all, but stopped right there. And then I just have to get this one to the right. Got to hit it hard so I can get it way over there. And I know I hit it too hard, but man, that thing like almost wanted to roll. So I was like, something is wrong with this disc. I was gonna look at it whenever I got the chance. Jump it up there for the par. And this is right here what I found. That will change the flight of your disc big time. It's not the nicks on the outside of the disc that matter nearly as much as the ones on the underside of that rim and so finding that I guess I hit some kind of rock or maybe a road um, that is why that disc is flipping so much so I basically stopped throwing that at that point Whew, and I've got I throw fan grip D1 here and this was disappointing because this is an easy hyzer but I just like leaked it just a touch inside and now I'm in this tree that is a lot more open than it used to be so I only I had to stand still and I'm like 350 feet away so I couldn't throw like normal I would I had to throw my flippy reverb that green reverb and try to hyzer flip it up there and it was a good shot it got me all the way to 60 feet tried to give that one a run but came up short and that is going to be in there for a par on disappointing par on this hole you want to at least have a putt for it. Tricky hole right here. Going Anheuser with my D1. It's a really overstable disc. I want that disc to hit the ground on a hyzer and skip forward. And it did just that. This is ideal. You can get closer, but you can't expect that. And I'm holding on to the jump putt a little bit long right now. Just trying to commit. But uh, that is going to put me at like 30 feet again. Because I'm running everything today. And I made it, so luckily saved my par there. Not not too much damage, but it's slow, slow round so far. Let's just put this one in the fairway because this is a short par four. Should be a guaranteed birdie. Can't do it really. I mean, you could, but uh, I don't think that's the smart play. I think the smart play is just little chip hyzer too. This is a 300 plastic PA3. I'm at 300 feet, which is what I feel comfortable throwing my putter. Nice and flat, drifted to the right, and I like it. That's 20 feet or so. And that felt good, and got a birdie there. We got Philo's Albatross hole coming up now. I've got this D3 that is really overstable that I've been leaning on. And it's a little inside of what I'm like looking to do but it's part of the miss and it's definitely playable from there nothing wrong with that a lot of distance here i'm going over stable d1 tie-dye guy and it was overturned into the cedar that i need to go left of um it got through it though and now i'm at a really weird angle you can't throw through this tree right here so i gotta go forehand roller but luckily i'm very comfortable with this kind of shot so that shot I'm throwing forehand roller and I'm just like making sure because I have to go so far left. I'm giving it some power, but I'm putting it on an angle to where it's just going to like immediately curl. So I use that all the time when you're stuck behind trees that there's just no way to get through. Now I got this hole through a really good shot on this one last time. I wanted to repeat that, but I... I overturned it. I was thinking of like how I went long left last time, so I wanted to give it some more power, but this was way too much. And that's the thing about these holes here at Beaver State Fling and uh, Milo McIver is 
these par threes are tough and a lot of them are just like if you don't throw the perfect shot it's just chip up for your three so you don't see much separation but if you throw good shots you're gonna take strokes on people this was the best shot that I've thrown on this hole yet but it's just too far left inside I thought my distance would be bad but the distance was actually good enough if that was to the right I would have been jumping comfortable jumper at it had to throw up a little sidearm definitely try to run it still everything that I'm doing I'm basically trying to make it at this point I'm in uh, 25th place and uh, all I want to do is get it as far up the leaderboard as possible this shot was not what I was looking for I mean angle was good but the line was not good the line was too far left so I'm going crazy here cut roller and that's a little too far right and now I'm gonna find myself in the trees on the other side luckily I have enough space to like throw in a normal backhand here this is my flippy PA3 putter and it's dragging right in and it's perfect it's right on the, the uh, green area and got me to the bullseye so it was a really good save there for me all right we got the funky hole right here this is an MX3 which is like my straight to just a little bit of turn mid-range and I'm throwing it so high big Anheuser not really trying to go that far because it's like almost like a V hole you have to come backwards a little bit this one I was trying to get to the mouth with I'm like 350 feet away from like the main entrance of this hole and I just overturned that because you don't want to underturn it you get cut off and you won't have anything go a little air bounce there I messed with the trees a little more than I wanted to but I was actually trying to like get it high enough to possibly go in All right, we got a par four right here. Going D3 on a tiny bit of hyzer is what I was looking for. And it was a little bit left early release, but um, it's doable. It's exactly where I was yesterday, so I'm going to do the exact same thing. That's my flippiest FX2 so that I can really get some cruise to the left. And it entered the gap, got me all the way to circle's edge, the exact same spot as I was last round. So I'll just try to do the same thing here. No bend possible because of how far I had to stretch, but just dropped it in there. That was, that was one of the better feeling putts of my round. All right, and then now we are on the genius hole where you're throwing a big power hyzer shot out this gap here. I feel like you could possibly try to go left over this road on the tee shot, but that's like crazy aggressive. Any second shot that lands in this group of trees is really good, and if you go past them, that's even better. This hole averaged 5.5, so it averaged over par as a par 5, and they were considering making it par 4, but it is definitely a par 5. That is so overcooked, though. Well, not so overcooked, but it was just a little overcooked, but there's OB on the right side. I got really lucky, dropped down before the OB, and now I'm going to try to get up there for like a putt somehow but that is uh, not gonna do it. That was so overcooked too, and I hit a cedar and dropped down safe, luckily, so I got really lucky twice in a row. But that second shot that I threw there is a shot I would never throw if I was like deeper in the hunt. If I, if I was just trying to get a birdie. If I was deep in the hunt, I would never have thrown that shot. Threw a sidearm all the way up here to this area, and then I just had a little putter chip shot to the pin. So overall, the last two shots, were really good the sidearm was a great sidearm and the putter up shot was good too and that was good enough to get me a par on this hole that's averaging over par so that was a positive and then I would love to get 18 I haven't got this one all tournament and it seems so easy for me but uh, under committed hyzer too I know I'm gonna have to like go work on that really soon I'm looking forward to it it stops good right there and just barely good and now I'm like 350 but I thought I was like 370 so I like really liked this one I thought I needed a lot of distance but I'm actually long right here this is like long 45 so make this for a birdie would be great but it's just off to the right again the jumper man that jumper kept coming off right but that's all right sometimes it just does that <laughs> 
But either way, guys, thanks for joining me for the analysis of my Beaver State fling. I'll be doing this for as many tournaments as I can possibly do. I appreciate all the love in the comments. If you have any questions uh, about like my thought process, shoot them down there. I would love to get back to you. And also, if you haven't, check out the Disc Golf Network for final round coverage. Thank you guys very much, and we'll see you next time.